All right, young people, we are back again this evening to receive, I believe, a word from the Lord. It's going to be very powerful and very impactful. And as you guys probably can tell by the title and the thumbnail, this message is going to be very powerful and applicable to us young people in these last days. We're going to be talking about young people temperance. And let's not lie, friends. Let's be honest and truthful to ourselves and to God. We all, at one point in time, and maybe even now, are struggling with intemperance. And in this lesson, that's what we're going to be talking about, temperance, as we are continuing our series looking at Peter's ladder. But before we get into God's word, I'm going to open up with a word of prayer, and then we're going to have a song of meditation to prepare our hearts. Kneel with me in prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for bringing everyone here tonight, Lord. Today, for sure, Lord, was not promised. We've seen all the storms that have hit, the hurricanes, all the, all the natural disasters. And Lord, you saw it fit to bring us through them so that we can serve you and so that we can study your words once again. Be with us, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed by the song. Amen. I believe that song has prepared us to now get into God's word. Kneel with me one more time in prayer to formally open up the word. Father in heaven, Lord, as you open up your words, Lord, give us 
your knowledge, Lord, wisdom and understanding, Lord, so that we can learn your truths, so that we can share it to a dying world. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, friends, join me and turn with me to the book of 2 Peter chapter 1. We are continuing our series looking at Peter's ladder. And um, I've been looking at the statement from Ellen White where she tells us that we are to put the young people's feet on Peter's ladder. And tonight we're going to be looking at temperance. 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 5, the Bible says this, And besides this, giving all diligence... Add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Verse number six. And to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness. So friends, we're going to be looking at today temperance. So now let's define the word temperance. And again, as always, I need the feedback in the chat. When you hear the word temperance, what comes to your mind? Let me know in the chat. Well, friends, I did some research on this word temperance in the Greek. And temperance, it means, simply means self-control. It means self-control. And there's another well-known definition of temperance, which is this simply. Of course, it's in my own words. The total abstinence of things that are bad and the use of something that is good moderately. That is what temperance is. And young people, that is what we're going to be focusing on in this sermon together. So now, let's get into God's word. What was the moral lesson that Jesus, the, the, this great, important moral lesson that Jesus gave, tried to teach Adam and Eve? Turn with me now to the book of Genesis chapter 2. What was that lesson that Jesus was teaching Adam and Eve? That lesson was temperance, to say no to your desires, to say no to your, to your lustful desires and appetite, and to have Complete trust, complete faith, obedience in Jesus Christ. That was the ultimate lesson that Jesus Christ was teaching Adam and Eve in the garden. And since Christ was trying to teach Adam and Eve those principles, what is Christ tonight trying to teach the young people? The same principles. To say no to your desires, to your wrong desires, and to say yes to Jesus Christ. This is what it means to climb Peter's ladder looking at temperance. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, and we're going to look at verse number 16. The Bible says this, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree in the garden you may freely eat. Freely eat. Basically what Christ is saying, you have all these trees, and you can freely eat of them. But verse number 17 tells us, But of the tree, of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. So Jesus Christ here is saying that you can eat any of the trees, eat of the fruit of any of the trees, but of this one specific tree, the tree of the knowledge and, and good of the knowledge of good and evil, you should not eat from. And we know by and by that Eve, she disobeyed God and she listened to Satan. Satan deceived her and told Eve, listen, Eve, you don't have to be temperate. Eve, you can listen to your wrongful desires, right? There's no need for you to be obedient to Christ. That is what the serpent told Eve. And God is trying to teach us young people to have self-control, to have temperance. Let's not young people be found tonight having the experience of Eve who was found intemperate. Let's break down the account of Adam and Eve some more, especially looking at Eve. Notice this, friends. Eve, she could eat of any tree that she wanted to. She could eat of any tree that was in the garden. But the one tree that Jesus said you shall not eat of, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that was the tree that Eve ate from. Why? Because she listened to Satan. Why? Because she lacked self-control. Why? Because she could not say no to the flesh. Why? Because she, she could not say no to her sinful urges. Young people, let's make the application within ourselves. Young people, in the Bible, in the spirit of prophecy, God, and also through his prophet Ellen White, has given us do's and don'ts. And many of us young people, when it comes to the don'ts, it's hard for us. Why? Because we lack self-control. 
We lack self-control. So in this lesson today, we're going to be focusing on temperance, self-control. Turn with me now to the book of Proverbs chapter 25 and back to Adam and Eve. And what happened as a result of Eve disobeying God and disobeying his word? What happened to Eve? She was kicked out of the garden. Let's make the application. So young people, if we continue to be disobedient to God, if we continue to not listen to God's word, continue to stop our ears from the messages, the sermons, What's going to happen? Our probation will close and, and we will be forever lost. And lost for what? Why? Because we lack self-control. Why? Because we are intemperate. Why? Because we are listening to the devil. Proverbs chapter 25. Lord, let that not be me. Proverbs chapter 25. Lord, give me this self-control. Proverbs 25. That should be our prayer tonight. Proverbs 25, and we're going to be looking at verse number 16. Proverbs 25, verse 16. The Bible says, Hast thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee, lest you be filled therewith and vomit. Now, uh, young people in the chat and also adults, let me know, is honey good? Yes, it is. Honey is good. But the Bible is saying that, yes, while honey is good, you can eat too much of it. And when you eat too much of it, you will vomit. You will get sick. So let's make the application. Young people, the Bible says we are to be temperate in all things. And what was temperance again? Self-control. What was temperance again? The total abstinence of that which is wrong. Let's make, let's uh, break it down some more. What are the things that are wrong, huh? Dairy products, right? Flesh foods, liquor, smoking, right? Those are the things that we are to what? To put away. But do you know, brothers and sisters, that in this lesson, I'm not going to be only focusing on temperance as it relates to diet. Temperance as it relates to your, uh, uh, the food and the drinks that you drink. No, but temperance, it runs deeper than that. What about our desires? What about our wrong feelings? Are those to be controlled? Yes, they are. And the Bible here is telling us that, yes, while honey is good, you can eat too much of it and you'll get sick. Look at another scripture. Proverbs 25. Let's look at another verse. Verse 28, the Bible says this. It says, he that hath no rule over his own spirit. You see? So the Bible, talking about the honey, that was the food. But notice the character, the, the feelings. Verse 28, he that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Imagine that. Notice what Proverbs, the picture Proverbs is, is, is painting. Notice here it says, those that have no rule, those who have no control over their emotions, those who have no control over their feelings, the Bible lets us know they are like a city that is broken down and has no walls. That means when you're intemperate, when you lack self-control, you're powerless, you're weak to your own flesh. You're weak. And young people, let's make the application. Are we weak? Yes, we are. We are weak to our sinful desires. How many times, young people, every day we are tempted by Satan? Like Eve, how many times? Satan comes with a temptation. Hey, go smoke. No one's watching, go smoke. Take a little hint of the, of the liquor, right? I'm making, this pre I'm making this applicable to the young people, right? Pump up, pop, pop this pill and, and put this in your body, right? Those are the temptations that, that we as young people go through every day, tempted to do what's wrong. And as we're going to learn later in this, in this lesson, that power is available. Power in Jesus Christ, as we learned about virtue, power is available to say no to our desires. Power is available to say yes to Christ and no to our flesh. Yes to Christ and no to Satan. That is the power of Jesus Christ. Those who can't rule their spirit. I was talking about food and drink. What about our feelings, right? Are you easy to get angry? It shows you lack self-control. If you're so quick to get angry and you start raging, it shows you lack self-control. Young people, let me point you to a couple current events. How many times, young people, have you all seen in the news? I'm sure you've seen it, and also adults. How many times, young people, have you seen in the news of other young people, students in a classroom, 
and the teacher catches the student on the phone during class, right? Uh, playing a Nintendo in class, right? Uh, uh, just on an on a, on a electronic in class, and that's not allowed, right? Because the teacher wants the students to pay attention to the education, right? And there are countless stories of young people when the teacher nicely said, hey, I'll give you your phone back after class, I'll give you your game after class. How many times did the student get up and start punching, beating, even a student killed a teacher? Why? Because he lacked self-control lacked self-control. He had no temperance. As we're going through this series, the Ellen White quote really makes sense. Place the young people, place the youth's feet on Peter's ladder. Why? Because temperance, us as young people, we lack self-control. And that's the truth. We do. Our feelings, our emotions. But as we're going to get into this lesson that God, he can help us. Turn with me now to the back to Genesis chapter 3. Now, what did Satan tell Eve? Back to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, looking at verse 4, the Bible says this. And the serpent said unto the woman, he said, ye shall not surely die. What is the devil doing here? He is in complete contradiction of God's word. Complete opposite of what God said. Verse number five, the Bible says, For God knows that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing both good and evil. We touched on good and evil last week. Verse six, And when the woman saw that the tree, it was good for food, she made a mistake, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she ate it and also gave it to her husband also. Young people, let's make the application here. Notice why Eve failed the test. She was deceived by Satan because she lacked self-control. Notice why. Because when she used her eyes, one of her five senses, when she saw that it was good to eat, when she saw how attractive it was, when she saw how it looked, that's when she failed. Let's make the application, young people. How many of us are going to fail and be intemperate because something looks good? Because the food that you know goes against the Bible looks good. It smells good. The drink, it looks good. It smells good. Your friends are pressuring you to do it. You're looked at as a nerd. You're not cool if you don't do this. And if you fall, it shows you're no different than Eve. You're intemperate. You lack self-control. You lack self-control. What about the lusts? Because young people, it's a, many times it's a very taboo subject. We don't want to talk about the lusts and the, and, the, and, the, and the disgusting sins, right? The sodomitish practices. What about the LGBT community? Do those people have self-control? No, they don't. Because when they look at, the same, at the, same, the same gender, right? And they look and somehow they are attracted. They cannot control their emotions. They cannot control their feelings. Therefore, they act upon it. How many young people are struggling? Not only with the sins of the LGBT community, but also the sins of even raping, uh, raping molesting individuals. Why? Because they don't, they can't control their emotions, they cannot control their feelings, they're not walking on Peter's ladder. They're not. And you're no different than Eve. And notice what Eve did. When she was deceived by Satan, when she lacked the self-control, notice what Eve did. She said, she also called her husband and said, I'm going to give it to you also. How many times, young people, if, let's say, let's use person A, it's, it's smoking, right? Wow, wow, I feel so good. I'm high. Ooh, it's good. Many times that young person doesn't keep it to himself or herself. What? He or she wants to share it with, her, with his or her friends, right? Come, join me. Drink with me. Smoke with me. Uh, 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 pop the pills with me. So this intemperance, it also leads not to evangelizing other people, but it leads to, to bad influences. You're influencing others to sin with you. You're no different than Eve. And Adam, as the man in the home, Adam, as someone who is supposed to be the one to lead and direct Eve, he also failed. Why? Because he was also intemperate and he lacked self-control. Friends, 
with a sad account. But young people, I feel like in this lesson, I'm not really hitting it close to home, right? How dangerous is the sin of intemperance? Because many of you all might be watching this video and wondering, hmm, is it that serious? Is that big of a deal? Look at Luke chapter 17. Look at the book of Luke chapter 17. The Bible tells in the book of Luke that because of the sin of intemperance, a whole city, a whole nation was destroyed by God. Why? Because of intemperance. Can you imagine? God destroyed a whole city. God destroyed a whole nation because of intemperance. Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. The Bible says this in verse 26. The Bible says, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the last days of the Son of Man. So young people, what you, what you have seen in the days of Noah, you're going to see in the last days. You're going to see in 2024. What you saw in the days of Lot, you're going to see now. What you saw in all these past accounts, the, the days of Noah, the days of Lot, the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, the days of all those stories in the Bible, you're going to see it now. Notice the sin, verse 26, verse 27. The young people, they were eating, they were drinking, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, the flood came and destroyed them all. So what is this scripture saying? That the young people, the individuals in Noah's day, they were found intemperate. They were eating. What's wrong with eating? Nothing. But they were eating the wrong things and they were overeating. They were gluttonous. They were eating. They were drinking. They were married and given in marriage. What's wrong with marriage? Nothing. But what made this marriage wrong? Why? Because there was fornication and adultery going on. This is why they were destroyed by God. This is why the flood came. This is why destruction happened. So young people, God, he's a God of love, but he's also a God of justice. If we are found intemperate young people, God is going to have to destroy us. We're going to be lost. Because not one boy, not one girl is going to be saved if they're intemperate. Verse 28. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they also, what were they found doing? Eating, drinking, intemperate. They bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. What does it mean? They bought and sold. That means they were greedy for money, hungry for money. That's also intemperance. Hungry for money. Scamming individuals for money. Verse 29. But the same day that Lot went out, Sodom, it rained fire. Sodom, it rained brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed by fire because of intemperance. Verse 30. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So in 2024, young people, we see that there's eating, drinking. Marrying, giving in marriage, being intemperate, right now we see it. So what is it showing us? It's showing us that Jesus Christ is about to come. It shows that the plagues are about to be poured out. It shows that the mark of the beast is about to be enforced. The question is, young people, are, are we found temperate or intemperate? That's the question. There's no middle ground. Are we found on Peter's ladder? Or are we found listening to Satan? And instead of us climbing the ladder to heaven, we're descending on the ladder into hell. That's the question. Now, Jesus, he gives the young people a warning. And the same way how Jesus gives the young people a warning, I'm giving you all a warning tonight. Consider this account of Esau. Do you know that Esau, he was lost because of the sin of intemperance? Esau was lost. Why? Because he made his God, he made his belly his God. He put his belly, he put his desires above Jesus Christ. We see that in Genesis 25. Write this down. I'm not going to read it right now. Genesis 25, verse 29 through 34. In that account, what do we see? We see that Esau, for a pot of, uh, a pot of lentils, Esau, he was so hungry. Esau could not control himself that he allowed Jacob to swindle, to scam him out of his birthright. Let's make the application. He allowed Jacob to take from him his salvation, his birthright. Why? Because of food. Why? He could not control himself. Why? He lacked self-control. Look at Hebrews chapter 12. 
Hebrews chapter 12. Let's make the application, young people. How many of us are going to sell our salvation? How many of us are going to put what we want to do above God? It shows we lack self-control. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16, the Bible says this. Lest there be any fornicator or, or profane person as Esau was who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. Verse 17, for he know how that afterward, when he would have in inherited God's blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. When Esau saw that he made a mistake, when Esau saw that he was intemperate, when Esau saw, when Esau saw that he was rejected by God, then he wanted to repent. Then he wanted to try to make things right. But at that point, it was too late for Esau. It was too late and it was lost. No salvation for him. Why? Because for one morsel of food, he sold his birthright. Let's make the application, another application. Is not the mark of the beast coming soon? We know that. It's coming. It's even at the doors. How many of the young people, the teenagers, even the adults, how many of us, when that time comes, are going to sell, uh, sell out Christ, reject the Sabbath, reject Bible truth, reject the message, reject Jesus Christ. Why? Because we're hungry. Why? Because we're afraid. Why? Because we cannot control our desires. Why? Because we're hungry, we're thirsty. But young people, if we just hold on for a little longer, and Christ sees that we are temperate and that we will never deny him or his truth, God, he will provide for us. Jehovah Jireh, Revelation 13, 16 and 17, the Bible confirms there's a time when there'll be no buying or selling. And the only way that you can buy food, buy water, all that stuff, you have to get the mark of the beast. I'm going to read a quotation from Maranatha 162, paragraph 4. Human laws will be made so stringent that men and women, boys and girls, will not dare to observe the seven-day Sabbath. For fear of wanting food and also clothing, they will join with the world in transgression of God's law. Because you're fearful of being hungry, because you're fearful of not having water to drink, no clothes on your back, you're going to sell out Christ. You're intemperate. You lack self-control. But it goes back to our previous lessons dealing with faith. God, he will provide for us. When you look in the Bible, you see many accounts of, think of, I'm thinking of the woman that I believe it was either Elijah or Elisha helped a woman in a time of famine. She had no food, she had no water, and God blessed her. Why? She believed in God and she was temperate in all things. So young people, if we're just temperate when that time comes, and we say, I'm going to hold fast to God's truth. I'm going to stand strong for God. God will stand for us and he will provide for us. Philippians chapter 3 verse 19. Philippians chapter 3 verse 19. You know what? I'm not going to go there. But what Philippians 3 verse 19 is telling us is that many individuals, they make their belly, they make their stomach their God. So my question is today, whom will you serve? Will you serve Jesus Christ, the God of heaven? the God of everything, or will you serve your belly? Are you going to serve your stomach? Are you going to serve the God of this world? Or are you going to serve Jesus Christ? What did Paul preach when Paul was brought before kings, when Paul was brought before royalty? What was Paul preaching? What was Paul preaching? Let's look at that. Acts 24. Because the same message that Paul was preaching, we also are to preach as young people, and also we are to live out this message. Acts 24. Every Friday night I've been saying that God, he has a special work for us. He's not going to use any young person if we're intemperate. He won't. Acts 24, verse 24, the Bible says this. This is Paul before Felix. The Bible says, and after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith of God, the faith in Christ. Verse 25, and as he reasoned of righteousness, notice what Paul preached. Paul, he preached righteousness. Paul, he preached temperance. Paul, he preached and judgment to come. Paul preached the three angels' message. What does that first angel message, message say? What does it say? Huh? 
Let's look at that. Revelation 14. What does that first angel's message say? Revelation 14, 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Focus on verse 7. Saying with a loud voice to fear God. What is fear God and give glory to him? What does that mean? Fear God whatsoever you eat and drink. Do all to God's glory. That's temperance. That's what Paul was preaching. Paul was preaching temperance and judgment to come. And Felix, he trembled at this message. He did. And that's the message we as young people are to preach. But how are we going to preach this message if we're not experiencing it? How are we going to preach temperance and we're not temperate? How are we going to preach judgment to come and we don't believe in the judgment of our message? We have to live what we preach. We have to live what we preach. Uh, what we preach if we want to be saved young people because I want to be saved let me know in the chat who wants to be saved I want to be saved and if we want to be saved what must we be found doing turn with me to now to the book of 1st Corinthians as we bring this lesson to a close 1st Corinthians chapter 9 1st Corinthians chapter 9 we're looking at verse 25 the Bible says this and every man and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to, to obtain, to get a corruptible crown, but God's people an incorruptible crown. Young people, when you look at the athletes, the sports stars, whether they're in uh, soccer, basketball, you name it, track and field, whatever, right? When you look at them, are they not temperate? Yes, they are. They have set times to eat the amount of food they eat, they watch their calories, all that. Why? Because they want to perform the best in the best way possible. So how much more us as young people who are trying to get to heaven, who are on this spiritual race and we're found in temperate. Does that make sense? How, how is it that athlete in the world is more temperate than us in the church? That shouldn't be because we have an incorruptible crown. Our prize, our trophy is greater than these athletes. So why are we not temperate? Hmm? Why are we not temperate? Verse 27. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. That means, that means to have self-control. Lest that by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. God is calling us young people to be temperate. Friends, when you consider Galatians 5, 22 and 23, we know it's the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, is joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and what? Temperance. Why is temperance the last fruit that is mentioned? Why is it? Because Ellen White tells us that temperance, it is the foundation for the Christian walk. It is the foundation. If you don't have temperance, you, you won't be able to to manifest any of the fruit of God's spirit. I'm going to read a quotation. Temperance, 201, paragraph 4. Neither of you have seen the necessity of health reform, but when the plagues of God should be around you, you will see the principles of health reform and strict temperance in all things. The temperance alone, that temperance alone is the foundation of all the graces that comes from God. It is the foundation of all victories to be gained. Mic drop, I can go, I can close this down, I'm, I'm finished. Ellen White says that temperance, it is the foundation for victory over sin. So young people, have you ever struggled with the sin? Struggled with anything? The mere fact that you're struggling, it shows that you don't have... Let me rephrase that rather. In order, for young people, for us to get victory over sin, whatever sin that is, we have to begin to start fasting and praying. Why is that? Because once we learn to say no to our stomachs, when it's growling, it's hungry, once we say no to have timbers, to have self-control, as it is to food, we can have control and temperance over any facet in our lives. Once we tell the flesh, tell our stomachs, no, no, and you have faith and trust in God, then we can say no to when Satan tempts us to do sin. Even saying no to something that's good. That's what fasting and prayer is. And that's how victories can be gained. I'm reminded of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 through 4. When Satan tempted Jesus Christ over appetite, that was the first test. 
Satan, wa Satan wanted to see Jesus. Are you temperate? Do you have self-control? He tempted Christ and said, Christ, if you're really God, turn these stones into bread. And what did Jesus respond and tell him? Man shall not live by bread alone. Man, a young person, shall not live by food alone, but by God's word, by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That is temperance. That is self-control. And Jesus, he passed all three tests. And since Christ did it, since Christ had the power, since he could say no to his flesh, so can we. So can we. Young people, what must we do? As I said before, turn with me now to the book of James chapter 4. James what chapter? James chapter 4, as we bring this lesson to a close. Friends, temperance, temperance. You know what? Let's hold James. Turn with me now to Matthew 17. Let's hold James. Matthew 17. Matthew what chapter? Matthew chapter 17, beginning in verse 21. Matthew 17, 21, the Bible says this. How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. The reason I want this scripture is because I was just talking about prayer and fasting. Some sins won't go away without first saying no to your stomach. Now, fasting and prayer is not only saying no to something that's bad, but saying no to something that's good. Is food, is certain foods good? Of course it's good. But when you learn to say no, not now, not my will, but thy will be done. Not what I want to do, but your will be done. Not, not eating the food right now, but your will be done in my life. That is true victory. Victory over the flesh. Victory over sin. This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Like Jacob in the garden. Like Jacob in that wilderness. Wrestling with God. I will not let you go until you bless me. That's true victory. True victory. <sighs> Friends, I'm going to read this quotation. Maranatha, 62, paragraph 4. The controlling power of appetite will prove the ruins to thousands of young people. To thousands. When if they have conquered on this point, they would have moral power to gain the victory over every temptation of the enemy. But those who are slaves, young people, are you slaves to your appetite? If you're a slave to your appetite, you will fail in perfecting Christian character. The continual transgression of man for 6,000 years has brought sickness, pain, and death as its fruits. And as we near the close of time, Satan's temptation to indulge appetite will become more powerful and more difficult to overcome. Young people, this temperance, appetite, it's the ruin of almost everyone. And Ellen White says that as we near the close of time, I'm going to close here, as we near the close of time, Satan's attacks, his temptations are going to come more powerful. And since Satan's attacks are going to become more powerful, that means our spiritual life is to become more powerful. That means our willpower to say no to, our, to sin, to say no to our flesh must get stronger and Jesus he can give us that power first John chapter 5 first John chapter 5 beginning in verse 4 first John 5 4 the Bible says for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith so it goes back to the steps on the ladder faith linked with temperance whatsoever is born of God it overcomes the world this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith, even our faith. Friends, I'm going to close on this solemn thought. When you look at the life of Solomon, Solomon, he was intemperate. Though Solomon was the wisest man, and notice young people, Solomon, he was a young man. Solomon, he was one of the wisest king because he asked for wisdom. And Solomon almost lost his salvation. Solomon almost was lost. Why? Because he was intemperate. How many wives does Solomon have? Hmm? Countless. How many concubines does Solomon have? Countless. How many things does Solomon have? Solomon said, anything that I laid my eyes on, I got. Solomon had the cars. That's my application. Solomon had the 
the, the private jets, the yachts, all the clothes in the world, all the money, he had everything. He was intemperate, he lacked self-control. He had all the women he wanted. And yet, Solomon said at the end of the day, all these things that I had, all the intemperance, the vanity, all of that was a waste of time. It was vanity, it was vexation of spirit. Lord, the most important thing in my life was wisdom. It was temperance. So young people, I close with that thought. Lord, give me that faith. Give me that temperance. Lord, help me. And just, and just remember, young people, once you can say no, to, no to even good food, as you're fasting and praying, God, he'll give you power. He'll give you the strength to say no to your flesh. Father in heaven, Lord, this was a message that was needful, impactful for our lives. Lord, as Ellen White said that Satan's attacks are going to be coming more strong as we near the end of time. Lord, we need self-control. Lord, we need temperance. Please, Lord, help us to climb Peter's ladder. We've heard your words today. Help us, Lord, not to just be hearers, but doers of your word. Help all the young people to put all that, all that we've learned into practice today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I believe this message really helped us, and uh, thank you. I'll see you guys next time. Happy Sabbath, and God bless.